Alright, can you guys hear me okay? We're going to try out the wireless mic tonight. See if this is going to work okay. Can you guys check, check? One, two. My levels look good. I'm going to pop out my chat here so I can chat with you guys while we're working here. <clears throat> can hear a fan. Uh, yeah, my uh, fume extractor is on right now, because we're going to be doing some soldering. Sound is lacking usual quality. It's probably because I'm on this microphone instead of my Yeti. So just to give you a, a comparison here, if I switch over, let me mute this. And this is the normal microphone that you guys are used to hearing me from. So it's weird. There's an echo. Echo. Oh, both? Wait, what? Oh, hang on. I wonder if I have monitoring on for that channel. Hang on. Monitor off. Monitor only. No, there should be no monitoring. Alright, well, I switched mics. Hang on. Alright, how about now? How's this sound? Let me see here. Check, check. Um, let me see here. Oh, you know what? Check. Um, let me see here. Oh, you know what? Check. Um, let me see here. Uh, hang on. Filters. Let's see. Is this any better? This is weird. Um, let's see. Copy filters. Let me double check here. Oh, this is the right microphone. Let me paste filters here. Is this any better? Right here. Is this any better? Where is this getting that echo from? These are not, these do not usually sound this bad. Uh, hang on. Now I'll just edit this down and re-upload it. <laughs> hang on, let me see. Device properties. Oh, fun stuff. I was using this microphone the other day. Digital, oh, you know what? Hang on. I know what it is. Ha! Huh. It's the, uh, the camera, uh, the camera mic was feeding in. Let's see here. Camera mic was feeding. There we go. Okay, so what happened was I had reset up my video sources on OBS. Um... And uh, the the microphone in the camera that we're using for video was feeding its audio into OBS. So, all right, let's get started. So, what I have here today is something that I put on the site. There's a link so you can sign up to be notified uh, once we're actually ready to start selling these. Um, these are gonna be twenty bucks, and these are the original ABL kits that we were making here in house. And I've got a ton of these left, so I figured, you know what? Let's make a little baggie. And uh, show you guys how to solder your own kit. So if you uh, don't need support and you just want to have a little fun project to do and get a bed leveling kit out of it, um, then I'm going to show you guys how to solder that up. Um, and then I'm going to give this away at the end of the stream because I've got a ton of these. So um, I am using, huh, I can't remember the brand. Uh, it's a Stage PXD1. I think. I can't remember the name of the brand. Um, but this is not the microphone that came with it. This is like a $20 like over the ear one. So I'm going to switch over to our uh, my working scope here so you guys can see up close and personal what we're doing. So I actually put the camera that used to be on the arm on my scope here so we can actually use this 
and this is 1080p now so before this was actually only 720p so now we got 1080p here all right so in the kit you're gonna have a bunch of parts um, we're gonna have a led a diode a resistor a capacitor electrolytic type Another capacitor, ceramic type, and an optical coupler. Now, when we built these boards, you could have it so that if you guys remember the Easy Connects, you had the barrel jack and the three pin JST. So we're including these along with the the or the two pin screw terminals. So uh, what this means is you guys can build these however you want. So on our new boards, we have everything together so you could either populate this with the barrel jack and the three pin or let's say you wanted to pull your power from your power supply and not a barrel jack you could do that configuration so i'm going to show you guys how to stuff all these boards and what goes where so let's see here am i let me adjust the focus all right let me see if I can get my helping hands in here somehow. So let me move all these parts out of the way. And then, oh, there's also a couple pieces of heat shrink for the, to clean up the sensor wiring. All right, let me see if I'm going to be able to be able to focus on this. Uh, I might not have enough height on here. Oh, that's going to take that off there. All right, so I'm going to have to do it the uh, the hard way here. All right. So now one thing I want to point out is the LED, which goes here, the opto IC, and the electrolytic capacitor all have to go in a certain direction. So if you notice, there's little plus markings on here for the cap. And then there's the flat spot for the LED. So if we look at the LED itself, you'll see there's a flat spot on that side. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And then we're going to bend the legs over. Now imagine assembling 500 of these a month because that's what we did at one point. Now, on your capacitor, you have a little band here. That's your negative. So I'm going to put the longer leg into the positive here. Oh, actually, I think we used to put them on the bottom, I, if, I'm, if I recall correctly. So you kind of just wiggle that in there. And then, again, pull the legs over. And we're going to do the same, except the ceramic doesn't matter which way it goes in because they're not polarity sensitive. And if you kind of pull on the legs as you're bending them over, it'll keep the component flush to the board. Okay? So these will like to walk themselves out a little bit. Um, what I would normally do is if you take a pair of pliers, kind of pull it, and bend it at the same time. And uh, my lights just shut off in here because I'm not moving. Ah! Um, all right. Now, on the diode, you have this little marking here. This means electricity flows through this way. So you're going to take the diode, bend it like that. And then the line goes towards this, this little solder jumper here. This is actually for if you wanted to bypass this. And then you got to kind of work it in there. So what I'll usually do is I'll usually take pliers and pull it through. And it should be nice and flush. All 
Oh, yeah, Matt, I think you're correct. We usually put the electrolytic after the... after the ceramic. Okay. So we're just gonna flip those around. And go ahead and put this back in, make sure we get the polarity correct. Gonna work that down in there. And the stripe should be facing the holes where the sensor wire goes, which is where what these three guys are. And now you see we're getting quite a bit of legs on here. It's kind of annoying. Um, but just how it is. Now the uh, the resistor. What I'll do is I'll take one leg and I'll bend it over like this, so it stands up. And then the little round part. It doesn't. These aren't polarity sensitive, but just for appearance wise, little round part goes around the resistor like that. And we just got the opto IC here. Now, if you look on the opto, there's a little marker in the corner. And that marker mates up with the marker on the silk screen on the PCB here. Now, what I like to do is when I put these in, you can bend these legs over so it doesn't fall out. Now, I'll usually bend over these two here on this side and this one right here. So now our opto IC is not going to fall out. I'm not trying to do speed here, so don't time me. Um, yeah, so we would do 500 of these a month, and we're this is just component placing. So. Now that I got everything where it needs to go, I have my soldering iron here. And I am using leaded solder because I hate I hate lead free. And I got my iron set at 400 Fahrenheit. And I'm just going to get these all soldered up here. So I'm gonna do one of the legs of the opto. The next leg, do my LED. The positive leg on our cap. And I'm going to jump over here to the diode here. And what I'll usually do is, once I get a few of these done, I will go in and clip off the ones that are soldered just to get these legs out of the way. But as you can see, it's pretty crowded. So I'm going to take my flush cutters here and get these legs trimmed down here. And you can see there, I need to hit those again. Oh, because <laughs> I didn't do that one. But that's okay. I still got a little sticking out here. So I'm just going to hit this again after I get this leg here. Just make sure we got a nice solder joint. I don't really like having rounded solders on here, so we're just kind of straighten that out. And I'm gonna go back to trimming these. So this one I already did. My LED, I already did. And so I just got a couple more pins to do. 
So the ones that are the biggest pain are these right here on the capacitors. These are on the ground plane. And they take a lot of heat. So you want to make sure you give it extra heat here. So it actually covers it. This was a big issue we had where people were assembling them here because they would never heat it up enough to actually flow the solder. So I would always have to check these when we were doing them. So see here, even though I had the iron on there for a little bit, still not perfect. So I'm going to hit it again. We just kind of go back and forth here. And now we're covering the whole pad. And I'll just get this a little bit here snipped off. All right, and then I just got one more on the ground plane, which is this leg here. Again, I'm going to make sure to heat this up before I even apply the solder so it, it flows in. All right. And now I'm going to hit that resistor that's right here. That's my resistor legs. Now, you might want to check if your components are actually still seated down all the way. If they aren't, go ahead and pull them back up. Resistor usually solders up without much fuss. So now let me trim these down here. All right. And then I got to hit my optos here. All right, so there's all of our main components all on the board here. So we got the resistor, the opto, our ceramic cap, our electrolytic. And you can see here, so that this top one is for the brown wire, black and then blue. This is for the sensor. Now, let me show you guys how to prep the sensor wire. So I'm going to shut off the uh, I'm going to shut off the fume extractor. So when you get these sensors, you'll have three wires coming out of them in the actual shielding. This is the shielding for the wire that actually drains out all the EMI. So what we would usually do is we'll clean this up, twist it, and then I'm going to cut this a little short because this was bent and we're not, we don't want this much wire. So I'm going to cut these all down here. And the white heat shrink that's included is for going over the ground shield here. So I'm going to cut this to the length of that and just leave a little bit. So just slightly shorter than what you leave. Now we can always strip this, but I'm going to cut this a little bit bad or a little bit back. Okay. And now I have a heat gun here and I'm going to shrink the heat shrink. Just make sure it doesn't really matter if you get all the wires from the shield inside here um, because we're, we got another piece we're going to put over to clean this all up.
All right. So there we go. That shrunk up. This is a three to one heat shrink, so it shrinks up pretty nicely. And then for the finale here, I'm going to put this over all the wires here to clean that up. And I'm just going to cut this a little bit because uh, you don't need the whole length of this. So I'm going to go ahead and put this over all the wires and slide that down. Now, where's my bottom at? It's right here. All right. So I'm going to pull this up a little bit, make sure everything goes in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and shrink all this down. We did this to every single kit. So imagine doing like 500 of these in a month by hand like this. Literally exactly how I'm doing it right now. All right, so let me get my wire strippers and we're gonna go ahead and get our sensor wires. So the order you want these in is brown, black, blue. And these sensors, even the ones that we're gonna be selling with these little DIY kits, um, they're already pre-tested by us. So we've already tested them to make sure they actually work. So there we go. We got our wires stripped here. And I'm going to go ahead and twist these. It's really hard to do this while I'm looking at my computer screen. Oh, man. There we go. Okay, so now we got our four wires. Now, what I'm going to decide is if I want to use the, what combination, um, what combination should I use? I think I'm going to go with direct wire for the power, and then a three-pin JST for the, uh, for the ZN stop. So, now, a little trick we would do when to keep these screw terminals in. If you bend over the one that's on the negative, which is the round one here, it won't fall out on you. And it doesn't matter if it's bent over because it's the negative. So I'm going to go ahead and solder that up now. Oh no. Yeah, I saw their breakout board. It's, it's just ethernet. Come on. There's my solder. Forgot to turn the fume extractor on. And again, this is going to need, this one's going to need more heat because it's on the ground plane. You can tell by the little fingers reaching out from the actual via here. Or not the via, but the, the hole. So... You want to give this a little more time to heat up before feeding the solder in. And just kind of give it a little bit. And kind of play with it. And there we go. So now the three pin JST, when you put these in, if my memory serves correct, um, I believe the little cutouts go towards the Opto IC. Yes, because I remember these sat flush. So now these two pins here are actually connected on the front to accommodate the Creality and the TiVo end stop. So again, you can kind of pinch that 
to get it to stay. Because if these two end up bridging, it does not matter. So now I'm going to go ahead and solder those up. I wish I could get my helping hands in here because this board is moving. All right. So there we go. Nice shiny solders. And all I have left to do now is to put my wires for the easy ABL through. So from top to bottom, we have brown, black, blue. And then our ground plane is actually going to go into here. So if you had the DC jack in here, you would want to put this wire through before you solder up that leg of the DC jack because we want to drain this out to ground. Because this V3 board was actually designed before we had the shielded sensors in. So we had to figure out a way to use the ground shield with these boards to drain them out. So we just put the wires through. Brown, black, blue. Just like you see here. And now I'm gonna hit those with the soldering iron and hopefully I can do this without my helping hands. Let me see if I can do this here. There's one. Make sure these wires are all the way through. There's two, and the last one is blue. So let me get that one down in there. Now this one's going to need a little more heat because this is, again, on the ground plane. I don't know if you notice a common theme here, but the ones that are on the ground plane are a little bit more of a pain to solder because of the fact that they need a lot more heat because that ground plane is just sapping it away. And there we go. And let's go ahead and trim these. Nice even solder all the way around. I trim this one down a little bit. There we go. And the wires are looking pretty good on the other side. There we go. So now I just got to get this over to my negative here. So that way my ground plane has some, or my, my braiding has somewhere to drain the interference it's picking up. So if you're doing the easy connect one, then what you're going to want to do is leave this a little bit longer. So that way you have more wire to work with. But for doing the direct wire, since nothing else is going in that hole, we're perfectly fine here. So I'm going to just fill this with the solder. All right. And I'm just going to trim that. And you see there's a little bit of wire showing, so I'm going to hit that again. So this is just me being anal. It's just the ground shield. 
It's not the end of the world. So there we go. He's not coming out. And uh, we're ready to test now. So we got our main three sensor wires in, our ground shield going to ground. So any interference is going to go out through there. Got all our leads trimmed. So now it's time to test it. Let me grab some wire. Well, actually, I got wire right here that I cut off of this. <laughs> You know what? That stuff is really short. <laughs> That's not going to work very well. Some leads I can take off of here. All right, so we got our screw terminals here, and I'm using a Here's a number one precision Phillips here. Like looking at the screen, it's harder to look at the screen. And so our positive is on top, negative is on the bottom. Go ahead and put my wire in. And I'm going to get rid of all these little shavings here. So now I'm going to put uh, 12 volts into this. These will work up to 24. So let's see if I did everything correct. All right. So I touch the sensor. The light comes on. So sensor tap. And we should get the light on the sensor itself. So we're good. Um, the only thing I we usually test when we were doing production is we would test for continuity across the Opto IC. Um, but these are all brand new, and I I would assume they work fine. Uh, we very had very rarely do we have failures with the Optos. So, but. That's it. This is ready to be put on a printer once I put it in a case. Um, the STL files are already in our firmware pack for this particular product. Uh, I was like, I know I had one sitting here. So if I disconnect my power here. So this is the case. I printed this out on the Woody. Woody's printing pretty good. <laughs> Um, so this little window's for the LED here. And if you look, there's little retaining clips in here. So the board goes in and sits in the little, like, recess, right? Eh. Line that up right about here. And then usually I'd push down right here with, like, a, ha a hex or an Allen key. And it'll snap in to the enclosure. So there we go. Um, and then this cable would just go out right here. And the lid would slide right on. And then this is a, there's a cutout here for if you had the two pin for the ZN stop. And then there's a cutout here for if you had the ZN stop wire going in like this does. So yeah. And then I would just slide the lid on. But that's uh that's it. So we just built a uh our our old school V three point one kit there. Um case is not included, you have to print your own case. It's it's a DIY, which means do it yourself. Um and I figured you guys might want to print your own color anyways. So yes, all of our sensors work with glass and mirror. It will not read the glue stick itself, but it will read the mirror. 
So glue stick isn't really a uh, dense enough material for it to actually sense. So, but these are our our last gen sensors that still work great. Um, these are 100 hertz frequency. Our new ones are 600. Um, all that me that means is you can say you have a 600 hertz sensor. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day, these are less accurate than the ones we're selling, the pro kits, but less accurate as in it's just bragging rights. So these work great. I still have a lot of these on my machines here and I hope you guys can get some use out of them because we've had a lot of these collecting dust. I was like, well, let's make a DIY kit because I don't want to be having our guys soldering these. Cause as you can see the one, like just that's all that time it took to do one kit. Um, and that's not even all the testing that we would normally do on a full kit. I would then test the ZN stop and adjust the sensors and everything. So it's, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was a lot of work. So that's why I was like, you know what? Um, we should just make them into little DIY kits. So that way we don't have all this labor going into this product and it's through hole. You, you know, anybody with a soldering iron, um, and some patience, let me just shut these off here. Um, can solder through hole. So, uh, if anybody was wondering, I'm sure people are wondering, um, the, uh, the soldering iron I'm using, which I've had for about four years now. And that soldering iron has built thousands of kits, um, is a Hako, I think it's the FX 888D. FX 888D. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I have these kits ready to go. So if you guys wanted, I could just open up the orders, but I haven't even, I have the pictures up on the site. I just haven't done the write up on it and I wanted to do a video. So, um, I'm going to probably, I'm going to cut this video up and re upload it. And that way it'll be on that product page. So if you guys want, there's a link you can sign up to be notified. Um, and like I said, it's gonna be 1999. Um, we pre-checked everything. The sensors are all already tested. So we've already tested to make sure that they actually work. Um, all the components are brand new, the boards and everything. This is just, you know, new old stock that we've had. Um, and I figured, uh, do, do, do. Malcolm, you yeah, don't, uh, don't, uh, I'm gonna hide that. Um, cause you have your personal email, but we don't ship to Cyprus. There's shipping restri restrictions on shipping to Cyprus because it's so close to all the conflict and everything. Uh, we've also had a lot of, uh, packages go missing to Cyprus. So we just stopped shipping to it because I want to say close to 70% of the packages never made it and it wasn't worth our time. Um, yeah. So anyways, um, just to be clear, this is just the kit. Here's the parts. You put it together. There's no technical support included. There, if you've soldered it, there's no warranty or returns on it. So unless something is actually dead, then that's it. So once you put it together, that's you know it's a kit. I can't take back something that's already been soldered. So I just want to be very clear about that. But the sensors are all pre-tested. All the components are brand new, um, just overstock that we had because we literally have the reels of all the parts and everything. So they're inspecting everything and packaging it. So if you want to save some money and put together a cheap uh, ABL kit that works, ugh, damn lights, <laughs> that works well still. Um, They'll be on the site in the next couple of days here, but you can go to the product page and hit join uh, waiting list. And then when we add stock to them, uh, we'll go ahead and email you that they're available. Um, I will put links directly on the page to the STL files for this and a link to the video. Um, the uh, I believe we only have the 18 millimeter sensor size available. I know we definitely have a ton of the 18s. I don't know about the 12s. Um, my camera's a little off level here. So is easy available pro by the standard. Yeah. It's six times the speed of these, but they both work. I mean, we sold these for over a year and we still use them here. It's just that these are a cheaper sensor. They're cheaper parts and these are through holes. So we were hand soldering all these and our new sensors are 600 Hertz pulling rate versus a hundred that these are, these are still faster than 
most of the sensors you can buy from Amazon or eBay or even other competitors. Uh, most of your capacitive type sensors are 60 to 80 hertz. These are 100, so these are already better. Better pulling rate, shielded cables, and better electronics on the inside. So these have been, these were a flagship sensor we sold for over a year, and I think we have close to 9,000 of them out in the wild. So... Um, let's see. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to see you guys are very chatty tonight. So I don't want to clog this video up with a bunch of stuff. So give me about 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to end the stream here and then I'll pop back on and we'll just have a hangout stream because there's other stuff I can uh, work on tonight. So anyways, thanks for dropping by. And like I said, if you want to pick up one of these uh, kits, you can go ahead and hit the join waitlist button on the product page and then as soon as we stock these i've got a whole box of them we're just going through and finishing packing up all the little bags of parts and everything and i also got to tell aaron to add in the heat shrink because i grabbed it and realized he didn't have the heat shrink with it so i need to have them cut the lengths of heat shrink and put them in there so you guys can clean up the wiring on the sensor side so it looks pretty so anyways um i'll be back on in about 20 minutes so i'll see you guys real soon bye bye now